In the last video, we talked about the difference. We talked about adaptive. Just scroll over here. We talked about adaptive immunity. We have the humoral immunity and the cell mediated immunity. And here is kind of an overview of those processes. The humoral immunity is mediated by the B cells and is an extracellular approach to, to take out the microbes. And the cellular immunity is for intracellular microbes like viruses and such. And it's mediated through T cells. So before we talk about these processes, we need to discuss or introduce the players. And like, you know, before you watch a basketball game or something, they introduce the players. That's what we're going to do here. We are going to introduce T cells. What is a T cell and all of that. And then later we'll talk about this process and kind of what happens during the process. So let's talk about T cells. So T cells are derived or they mature in the thymus. They're first made in the bone and then they're shipped to the thymus and that's where they undergo maturation. And I'll talk a little bit about this uh, later in the video, but how they develop, but T cells are come from the thymus, so that's why they're called T cells. T cells you can think of uh, as a kind of a quality control. They'll they kind of help in the quality control, if you will, arena. You know, businesses they have a QC department where the quality control department kind of checks on the quality of the of the product to make sure that it's up to up to par, so the customers don't get upset. That's kind of what the T cells do. And 60 to 70 percent of all lymphocytes are T cells. And this picture here is to represent this picture here is to represent a T cell. And the reason why this is all marked up is because I just did this video and then my audio stopped working halfway through it, so my you didn't it didn't record any of my audio, so I'm going back through again. This this video this uh, picture here is to de is to depict a T cell floating in the blood, and this is an RBC right here, a red blood cell, and T cells do not detect free or circulating antigens. That's important to note is if there's a bacteria here, if there's a bacteria here in this in this blood vessel, this T cell, this is a T cell, this T cell won't directly communicate or recognize this bacteria. It has to go through an intermediate and this intermediate is this major histability complex. That's what these T cells communicate with is these major histability complexes. And we're going to talk about that. First I want to give you kind of an overview of where these T cells are located at. T cells, this is a spleen, this is to represent the spleen, and I got this picture from Pearson Education in 2006. But this, but here's a spleen, and if you were kind of to chop out a center of this, you would get this picture over here. The spleen has a splenic artery and the splenic vein that run into the spleen. And so if the blood, if the blood is coming down the pipe here, when it exits, the first thing that it will hit is white pulp. This white pulp here is part of the spleen. And there's three zones within this white pulp, one of which is the splenic periarterial sheath, or the periarterial lymphoid sheath, or periarterial lymphatic sheath, or PALS. <laughs> I love it how people can't be decisive on the naming here. But nonetheless, there are several names, but in conceptually, just, just think of it as as soon as the blood exit the splenic artery or the arterioles, it will diffuse into this into this splenic tissue. This is called the red pulp here, where it's red, and this is called the white pulp. As soon as it exits, you're going to want to filter it because the spleen is a filtration organ. That's what it does is filters things. You want this quality control mechanism or part of your immune system to be strategically placed. So as soon as this exits, you're going to want to filter it before it gets back into the circulation. So that's where it's at, is in the white pulp as soon as it exits the splenic artery and before it diffuses over and gets sucked back into circulation through the splenic vein. 
there, there's a high uh, concentration of T cells in lymph nodes, in lymph nodes. And just a little reminder, a recap on uh, lymphatic tissue, when you have an artery, let's say this is an artery, blood is coming up through the artery, it crosses through a capillary and gets diffused out, the blood and nutrients get diffused out into the tissues and then get sucked up by the vein, the vein doesn't return all of the arterial blood supply a little bit maybe five five percent if you will gets left out in the into the tissues and so you're you don't want your the tissues to to receive a constant influx of five percent of fluid that would cause edema so what happens is you have the lymphatic system the lymphatic system is a drain if you will so it comes down the drain the lymphatic system into lymph nodes these afferent lymphatic lymph nodes or these afferent lymphatic vessels receive lymph or this excess of arterial blood and it passes through these lymph nodes and out the other side what happens why the blood or this lymph rather is passing through this lymph uh, this lymph node is it gets filtered right here in these follicles in the interfollicular zones inside these follicles there's a high concentration of of T cells where these T cells will kind of filter and be used to di to detect any abnormalities or anything that uh, needs to the immune system needs to be aware of also, there are other strategically placed um, collections of lymphoid tissue, um, the CALT, MALT, and GALT. CALT stands for Cutaneous Associated Lymphoid Tissue. MALT stands for Mucosal Associated Lymphoid Tissue. And GALT is Gut Associated Lymphoid Tissue. And the reason why we have these is because if there's a break in the skin, you're going to want a collection of these immune cells, especially these T cells, to be there to detect or be a part of detection of foreign invaders, right, by the skin. The malt, mucosal, you know, your tonsils, for example, are uh, part of this malt system. And as soon as a bacteria that you eat is introduced into your body, you're going to want you know, your immune system to be aware of that as soon as possible so it can amount a defense. In your gut, right when the food gets absorbed across the gut barrier inside your, in your, inside your gut, the small intestine, you are going to want to be aware of if there is any foreign invaders. So these uh, lymphoid tissues are uh, strategically placed to give you uh, the, s the sooner the better kind of phenomenon. The sooner you know about a pathogen, the better your body can fight it. So let's move down here to a concept called major histability complex restriction, or MHC. So major histability complex restriction means that your body this major histability complex over here. First of all, let me explain what a major, uh, the major histability complex is, and then I'll talk about the restriction. So there's two types of major histability complexes. There's the class one and then the class two. Class one is on all nucleated cells. On every nucleated cell in your body, there is a major histability complex, class one. And what it does is, you know, there, there's parts. You know, uh, say this is a nucleated cell, and this, this cell will produce proteins. It will produce little, you know, little molecules. It will produce little chemical signals that need to, to be secreted. It will, it will, this is life. It's undergoing life. It's making things. It's taking in things, receiving information. Well, there's little parts. Let's say there's little parts that are broken down or whatever. And these parts right here, these are parts of just random parts. They'll get shipped up here to this major histability complex of this class one. And they'll, they'll, be, they'll be shipped up here and they'll be right here in this, in this place. And what will happen is that T cells in the places that we just discussed, 
floating in your blood, uh, you know, in the places where we just discussed, there is a, a T cell receptor, TCR, usually made up of an alpha unit and a beta unit. What will happen is that this little part, if you're talking about the major histability class one, it will be displayed to this T cell and this T cell receptor will then kind of feel it or you know however biochemically you want to describe that it will sense this part and it will say if it if it's a T cell it will say okay so this is normal I don't need to do anything if it's a mature if it's a mature T cell and if this is just a normal part of you it will say this is normal no problem I don't need to alert the immune system at all that we have a foreign invader. There's no response, which brings us into kind of the development. Inside, how they develop is they get shipped from the bone marrow and they go to the thymus where they mature. And this process will happen over and over and over and over again, where parts of you byproducts of metabolism and normal cellular functioning will be displayed to these T cells. If these T cells warn the immune system, you got the immune system here, if they warn the immune system in an erroneous way, then they'll undergo apoptosis. If they if they don't, let's say that there is a bad, there's an antigen, something that's wrong with the body, and they don't warn the immune system, they'll undergo apoptosis and die. So that's how they develop, is they're exposed to bad things and good things, and then if they respond appropriately, then they mature, and then they're shipped out into the uh, mature circulation. But if they're wrong, if they respond erroneously or wrongfully, well, then you don't want them in your body. And so they undergo apoptosis and die. That's normal development. And so these major histability complex class one, they are on all nucleated cells. And they usually, I'm going to say usually because there are exceptions, and we'll talk about this in the next video, but they usually display self parts of you that are normal and these major as a reminder these major histability complexes and this is what I was hinting to on this major histability complex restriction is that these major histability complexes are unique to you each individual each human has kind of a unique major histability complex structure and we can go into that and we actually will talk about that a little bit more but on your DNA sequence you know your DNA is a double stranded there's parts of your DNA that's red and then they recombine you know this part is red makes up a protein this part is red makes up another protein this part is red and so there's a protein that's made because of this gene or this part of your DNA is telling us telling the body these cells to make this part well, these parts recombine. You know, let's say this is, you know, a 400, let's just say, I'm not saying that it is, but let's just say there's 400 parts to this major histability complex, little proteins. Well, these 400 parts rearrange in random er, arrangements so that you have your own unique major histability complexes. So why that's important is that because when you do, and we're going to talk about this later, when you undergo organ transplant, when you get a new liver, a new heart, a new kidney, your body will, will fight it. It will fight the new organ because each one of you is, is uh, you know, each of these major histability complexes is unique to you so that when you put another organ inside another body it's a different major histability complex and these t-cells uh, start recognizing that and they won't read the antigen they won't read self and so they start attacking this new kidney so that's how you get organ rejection and we're going to talk about that in greater detail but that was just kind of a planting a seed if you will just something to think about so next we move on to this major histability complex class 2. Now how these are different is that they're on phagocytes. You can go to wikipedia.org under phagocyte and there's a whole list of all the phagocytes in your body. And all these phagocytes have these major histability class 2 these these complexes these complexes on the phagocytes. And what they do is they are for foreign evaders. 
As, as to remind you, I've talked a lot about this in the inflammation videos, but you can review those if you'd like. But let's say there's a bacteria here, okay? And this is a phagocyte. What will happen is this phagocyte, it will stretch out its arms, if you will, and it will grab a hold of this. It, the phagocytes don't have arms, but they're called pseudopods. Uh, but they're like arms, if you will, and they'll grab a hold of this bacteria and they'll eat it. And the phagocyte will destroy it. There's little pockets of lysosomes in here, uh, reactive oxygen species, um, some other uh, ways by which phagocytes destroy bacteria that they engulf. And they'll just chew it up and they'll destroy it. And so there'll be little parts. There'll be little parts all over. And then what will happen is that these little parts, like in this video, will be displayed like in this part they'll display they'll be displayed here so now this is an antigen antigen or something foreign this is an antigen and this is a foreign foreign object and so these t cells will now these t cell receptors and these t cells will come up and they'll butt up against these phagocytes and they'll They'll signal the immune system saying, hey, anything that you, you know, other cells, other parts of the immune system, if you come in contact with this bacteria, this, this substance, whatever this is, let's say substance X, or let's say this is his head. Let's say this is the bacteria's head. Bacteria don't have head, but just to get the illustration apart, if this is a head or a foot or a finger or a leg or something, say any, if you recognize this at all, it's foreign, destroy it. And so your body will destroy anything that looks similar to this. So that is how these T cells work in the immune system. This is how your immune system can recognize uh, yourself and how it can recognize foreign invaders. In, under the adaptive immune system. This is these T cells function under the adaptive immune system. You can watch previous videos to know what that is. But this is kind of how these T cells work is they recognize yourself through these major histability complexes and they recognize foreign. Now that's all about the recognition part of T cells. In the next video we're going to talk about what responses the T cells elicit. So we'll see you in the next video.